And thank you so much for joining our press conference today. Like last time, we will start with some pre-submitted questions and then move on to the open session. Starting off with the first question, it's from Malik Shelp, ESTNN, to anyone. After watching Fnatic pick up back-to-back -back wins yesterday, where were your hats at coming into today's grand finals match? I'm sorry, what, which camera do you look at? Is it me? Any camera is fine. Uh, honestly, after, after watching Fnatic play both those games, they look pretty sloppy, so I knew we had a good chance, like, especially watching back their matches. And we were able to get the information we needed, and it worked out exactly how we expected. Next question is from Mikhail Klimentov, the Washington Post, for tens this time. Do you intend to keep playing with Sentinels going forward? How much is that the decision of yours, as opposed to be it being a negoti negotiation between Sentinels and Cloud9? I mean, obviously, it'd be a no-brainer that I'd want to compete with this team. Like this team is honestly so amazing. I have fun with them. I can trust all of them. They're, I don't know. They're just the best team it's ever had. And really, like, I would stay if I could, and I really hope I could. So I'm, I'm praying. Next question is from Brandon Moore. Run it back to G to Shazam. As you're probably well aware, this was a hard-fought series on both sides, and that's probably an understatement. Where do you rank the series in terms of toughest opponents since Sentinel started competing in Valorant? Oh man, even though it was a three-zero, it was definitely one of the most stressful series. Um, they're a really good team. It was definitely a different fanatic from the first time we played them. I think this was one of the hardest series we played. But then again, like we proved, we have like the strongest mental of any team in Valorant. Uh, to be able to close that out, to be able to um, be behind on two maps and bring it back, uh, it's just amazing by everyone. Next question is from name NK Rosinski, run it back GG. You guys proved today that playing under pressure is something you do very, very well after winning over times on the initial two maps in the series. What's the secret staying composed in those situations? Uh, yeah, I think it comes down to all of us having trust in one, one another. So like in 2v2s and 3v3s, our comms are just like really tight, you know, no overcoming. And then whenever somebody says an idea, we just follow through with that. And we all give great ideas and we're just all on the same page. So, you know, it's really easy to stay composed. Next one is from Eugene Freelance. Congratulations on winning VCT Masters 2. Was not dropping a single map within your expectations going to Iceland? Um, honestly, yeah, I do think it was in our expectations. I think the, maybe that outside influence of like people, um, maybe overhyping EU a bit, uh, brought that down from the outside. But like, I think on the team, we have that type of confidence where even, even the odds are stacked against us. And when people think, you know, whatever they may think about other teams, we, we always show that we can compete at the highest level. Next one is from Andy Williams, Dixerto. There's no denying that Tense has improved the squad. Does your success at VCT Masters confirm that you'll be looking for him to stay long term? Uh, I mean, of course, from the beginning, we were super lucky to even have Tyson play with us. Uh, he's an amazing player. Um, you know, people rate his mechanical skill, but he's a great teammate, and we all love playing with him. And you know that we would want to play with him for the future too. So we'll see what happens. Next one is from Shay Robson, GameZo, and it's for Intense. We saw some hyper-aggressive plays from you before the tag pass on map one. Did the pass ruin your momentum at all? In terms of a momentum, it definitely wasn't influenced by the tech pause, or I just decided, or I was going for less risky plays because I didn't really need to. It was their game to lose. Next one is Jessica Shanagel, Nerd Street Gamers. You have won Masters too. How are you going to celebrate? Getting drunk. Okay. Next one is from Kevin Hitt, the Esports Observer. How does it feel to be at such a historic esports event and now having won it? 
It's impossible to describe the feeling right now. I think when I got up and started cheering, I didn't fully process that we hadn't won yet either. Like it's it's like a mixture of emotions. Um, I think it'll hit us more as uh, time goes on because right now we're still feeling like in the heat and the moment of everything. Um, but yeah, it is definitely something to appreciate. Next one is from Andy Williams, Dexerto, and it's for Shazam. You have been vocal about the importance of your hybrid player coach role on the squad. Will you be looking to bring on a coach in the near future? Or is it a case of it isn't broke? Don't fix it now. Yeah, um, we've still been looking for a coach, but it's also a mixture of, you know, don't, don't fix what isn't broken. Uh, the dynamic we have right now is pretty good. But I think that if we find the right fit, uh, it'll only help. It'll help the workload. But uh, definitely, like, I, I don't mind it. I, I enjoy prepping for the games. You know, if it works, then I'm going to continue doing it. All right. We will now move on to the open session. Um, the first to go is Wesley Pereira. Hi, everyone. Wesley from the Great Sports from Brazil. So my question is for Shazam. With the first international title won and the spot in the Valorant Champions, do you cause even greater pressure for results going forward? Um, I feel like it's an unfamiliar situation uh, or like a familiar situation for us because, you know, we, we did have success before and the pressure was on us and everyone looked at us and we continue to perform. And I think that all of us sitting here are going to remember this feeling right now. And with that, with that, with that, like we're not going to get complacent and we're going to continue to work hard and reinvent ourselves and, you know, dedicate ourselves to this game because we want to win moving forward as well. Next is Niall to score esports. Yeah, so first of all, I just wanted to say congrats to the entire team. You guys had uh, an incredible tournament. Uh, my question is for Shazam. Uh, I spoke to you a couple months ago, and you, you talked to me about how you, you were having a roller coaster of a year. Uh, you said that you felt as though every time you guys took two steps forward, you would also take 10 steps back. So after a year just kind of full of setbacks, how does it feel to win here in Iceland and prove that after everything you've done, you. you guys are the best team? Uh, Can I pay you. with up, uh, Apple um, Pay? Yeah, no, it's it's insane. The stuff that we have gone through as a team through the whole course is Thank you. is Thank like you. it's it's I don't know. Like people don't even know like all the stuff that we've gone through and to still continue and grind through these tournaments and um, fight through these Thank setbacks you. and continue to win. It's the best feeling in the world. You know, we continue to give it our all, um, and we kind of let nothing stop us. So just really happy with everyone. Next to go is Yinsu Collins, upcomer. Uh, this question is a, a slight follow-up, but i like to direct this at Dapper. Uh, of course, you know, having secured that spot for the end of the year event, which I'm sure is the one that everybody uh, have their eyes set on and want to win. How much does that take off the pressure for, you know, Masters 3? And also, does this mean that you guys maybe will try and push the boat out a little bit and experiment here and there, knowing that you don't have to worry about that qualification? Uh, well, it feels great. You know, we, we don't, we have that monkey off our back. We don't have to worry about points or anything like that, but I think we'll still, you know, just try to cement ourselves as the best and try to win every single series that we can go to Berlin, qualify to Berlin, win Berlin, hopefully. And yeah, uh, we're not the biggest experimenters. We just do what we know is good and just keep, you know, doing what we know best, which is to win. And we'll just keep doing that. Next to go is Brendan, run it back to Chi. So this question is really for anybody. Um, it was a similar question asked to Fnatic in the prior press conference. Um, there are going to be more spaces for NA, you know, when we get to Masters Berlin. Uh, if you guys just want to answer what you think, uh, if you were there, obviously, with the other teams you would like to see there alongside of you from the region. Um, well, I don't know about, like, want to see there. Obviously, there's, like, stronger teams in NA that, that we find good. Um, I'd probably like have to guess Cloud9 and our dudes, I think, are going to break pretty well in these next qualifiers because they're going to have time to prep and uh, obviously get better. I mean, that goes for every team, but I think those two teams have the most potential to qualify with us as well. Next is Emery, VLRGG. Yeah, this one is for anyone. What does it take to be able to consistently win those close maps, especially the ones that go into overtime? Uh, 
I don't know. Someone else answer that. <laughs> I'm just gaming. <laughs> that is it, though. Like, just casually, um, like, taking everything round by round, not stressing about the previous round. We're able to reset. Like, Zom is kind of like a rock. He doesn't care. He's just going to play the next round and do what he has to do to close out the round. We don't um, get caught up in previous rounds or, like, the big picture of the game. We just break it down and do what we have to. And I think that's the key to success. Next is Scott Robertson, .esports. Hi guys, first of all, congratulations. Um, Breeze, uh, excuse me, Breeze should be added to the map pool for the next stage of VCT. Um, how would you rate your preparedness on that map? And are you looking forward to playing it in official matches? We have not touched the map once. Uh, so our preparedness is a fat zero. And I'm pretty excited, you know, to experiment on a new map. I think it's pretty free flowing, which will suit our style. So we just have to see when we get back home how it feels. And we'll go from there. We have Niall to score esports again. Yeah, so this one's for Dapper. Um, I know you grew up playing Counter Strike and League of Legends, and these are two games that North America hasn't really found a whole lot of success in. So uh, last time I talked to you, you said that going into Iceland, you just wanted North America to prove that they can compete in Valorant. So how does it feel that NA is finally the best at an eSport? And how many White Claws are you going to crush tonight? Yeah, I mean, it feels surreal. I still, I don't think it'll hit me for a little bit, you know, just like that we actually cemented ourselves on top of NA and international sport. Like to me, uh, with no crowd, you know, someone's telling me we have like a million viewers. It doesn't really hit me. Like, yeah, this is the top. Like we... We did this. We're the top. And it hasn't really hit me, but it feels like it's insane. You know, I know it'll feel great when we get back home. And with the White Claw question, uh, I don't even remember what time my flight is, but I'll probably miss it. Next one is Jessica Shanago, Nerd Suit Gamers. Hey, guys. Congrats on your win. This question is for TENS. I'm staring at a picture of a suitcase with a bunch of mice in it. Why do you bring so many, and how do you choose which one to play with? So that suitcase picture is just kind of a meme because on my stream, I'm, I have a chronic illness of constantly switching my mice or settings. So I tweeted that just for some humor and uh, I need some help. I, I don't know what this, I don't know what mouse to stick on. Maybe I'll stick on the mouse that I used here. Next is Brandon, round about GG. Uh, so this question is for Zoms because he always has, you know, the spicy answers. Um, it's clear you guys uh, currently are the best team in the world. What is it going to take to dethrone Sentinels? Mm, I don't know if it's possible. <clears throat> I don't think anything can. We're just too good. You know, we're, all, we're the best individually in each of our roles, and we have the best teamwork in the game. So it's going to take a lot. Teams are going to have to do a lot. I don't know if they can. Next is Scott Robertson, .esports. I guess no question from Scott. Next is Niall, the score esports. Yeah, so my last question is uh, for tens. Uh, a lot of people uh, doubted you because of your past in CS, but how does it feel to show up at the first major Valorant LAN and maybe prove some of the doubters wrong? Honestly, it just felt amazing. And like, I'm just so proud of us as a team and what we accomplished accomplish here today. Like, it, it still feels pretty surreal to me. And like, the moment that we won, dude, everything like went blank for me. Like, I, I didn't, it was hard to process. Emery Veal RGG now. My question is also for tens. So, in this series, among all 10 players, you had the most first kills and the fewest first deaths. So what does it feel like to just be, you know, basically able to do whatever you want at the start of, you know, every round? I would like to contribute like that success in my opening kills to Shaz also, because he would kind of not let me play overly aggressive. And if I get too like confident, I might maybe throw around. So a lot of the time, it was kind of them challenging me and then me just winning the fight. Do we have any more questions for Sentinels? 
All right, that's it for the winners for today. Thank you so much for joining Sentinels.